Let's look at an often misunderstood prophecy in Matthew 24. Before studying it, let's consider the four major views. Preterism, or past fulfillment, believes that all such prophecies were fulfilled around 70 AD. Historicism, or present ongoing fulfillment, is a view that these events are fulfilled throughout the history of the Church. Futurism, or future fulfillment, teaches that these prophecies will be fulfilled just before the return of Christ. And finally, there's a view that in many ways combines them all, past, present and future, called variously the spiritual, idealist or symbolic view. How does this prophecy begin? Was it fulfilled in 70 AD with the siege of Jerusalem? Or was that just a forerunner to later prophecies? Now Jesus left the temple and was going away. His disciples came to point out to him the temple buildings. He responded, Do you see all these things? I assure you that no stone will be left on another. Everything will be demolished. What are the basic questions this prophecy answers? This is often called the Olivet Prophecy because Jesus was on the Mount of Olives. Later, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him in private and asked, When will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world or age? Let's not be led astray. From politics to religion, many have claimed that they are the Anointed One, the Christ, the Messiah. And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying I'm the Christ, and they'll lead many astray. How vague or non-specific are these next comments? Is that deliberate? You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed, because these things must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginning of birth pains. Is this just the beginning of troubles? All these are the beginning of sorrows, birth pains. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations, for my name's sake. Have these things long been happening? And many false prophets will rise up, and mislead many people. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will become cold. We should stand firm. When is salvation fully complete? As soon as one confesses Christ? Or after a life of endurance? Is eternal security, or the once saved, always saved view, weak on this point? But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When will the end come? Are preterist and historicist views weak on this point? And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. Was this next prophecy fulfilled by Antiochus Epiphanes, who put idols in the holy place, or had many priests already defiled the temple with their hypocrisy and money-making scams? Is there possibly a yet future, symbolic fulfillment of this prophecy? When, therefore, you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Is there a certain sense of urgency in this prophecy coming to pass? Would city gates be shut and Jews possibly persecute those who fled on a long journey on the Sabbath? Then those in Judea must escape to the mountains. Those on the roof shouldn't come down to grab things from their houses. Those in the field shouldn't come back to grab their clothes. How terrible it will be at that time for women who are pregnant and for women who are nursing their children. 
pray that it doesn't happen in winter or on the Sabbath day. Have there been historic times of great tribulation? Are Christians in some nations, like North Korea and Afghanistan, suffering great tribulation today? When it says nobody will be saved, could that indicate worldwide tribulation? For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Are there some things we just shouldn't believe? Is it judgmental to avoid false prophets and discern deceptive false miracles? If anyone tells you then, look here is the Messiah, or over here, Do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note. I've told you in advance. So if they tell you, look, he's in the wilderness, don't go out. Look, he's in the inner rooms. Don't believe it. Is Jesus' return associated with these events? Are preterists and historicist views weak on this point? Will Christ's return be as sudden, dazzling, and unexpected as a flash of lightning? For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What do these signs indicate? Just as the gathering of vultures shows there's a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Has the next sign yet appeared? But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They'll see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. What will then happen to true Christians, the elect, the chosen ones? And he'll send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they'll gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Should we always be ready, because we don't know the exact day of his return? Will these things occur within a generation? Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Is predicting the day or hour foolish? But no one knows of that day and hour, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Will the days before Christ's return seem normal? When the Son of Man appears, things will be just as they were when Noah lived. People were eating, drinking, and getting married, right up to the day the flood came, and Noah went into the big boat. They didn't know anything was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. This is how it'll be when the Son of Man appears. Should we stay alert? Is this more like Noah's flood taking people away than some rapture theory which says the opposite? Can we predict the day? At that time, there'll be two men in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know what day the Lord is coming. Should we also stay awake? Is this more of a warning to stay awake and be ready than engage in some kind of prediction addiction? Therefore, stay awake, for you don't know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and wouldn't have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, 
for the Son of Man's coming at an hour you don't expect. Should we also be found working? Is the overall lesson of this prophecy that we be found doing God's work? Is there a reward for faithful workers? Who then is a faithful and sensible slave, whom his master has put in charge of his household, to give them food at the proper time? That slave whose master finds him working when he comes will be rewarded. I assure you, he'll put him in charge of all his possessions. Here's a symbolic view which incorporates aspects of preterist, historicist and futurist views, perhaps the most balanced. What of lazy Christians who lose a sense of urgency? But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he doesn't look for him, and in an hour that he's not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Is this prophecy deliberately general enough that it cannot be used to predict dates? Does it warn us not to be led astray, to stand firm, stay alert, stay awake, and be always ready, diligently doing God's work on earth? Are we? You decide. <music>